Hey guys, so welcome back. So for today's project, we are going to be going and replacing the track on this Polaris 2001 XC800. Take a look at the rest of the channel because there is a lot more videos regarding the rehab of this sled. There's a playlist for it, so take a look at all that stuff and then you'll see essentially what we've been doing on this sled along with the track. So with that being said, why don't we talk about what you're going to need to do to replace a track on an Edge chassis snowmobile. Essentially, it's pretty straightforward. It's no different than any other sled. Um, but essentially, there's four key things that you need to do. First is you're going to remove the exhaust. Second, you're going to remove the fluid from the chain case and uh, remove the bolt holding on the lower gear in the chain case. Third, you're going to remove the bearing retainer on the clutch side and then fourth we're going to loosen up the axle on the rear suspension and then we're going to push that in and then we're going to take the suspension actually out and then once we do that we will then be able to remove the track so with that being said why don't we uh go on to step one all right so here's step one so the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the pipe and then you also remove the uh the um the can and this is easily done by removing the springs off the wide pipe any springs that may be holding it in the middle and then springs on the can and then any springs that is holding the can to the chassis um we've been doing a lot of work on this sled so a lot of this uh some of the stuff some of the stuff has already been done but to pull the springs off the uh, the Y pipe, the easiest thing to do is you can buy a spring uh, puller or you can take an old screwdriver and just put a slot in it and then you can use this to remove the springs. So why don't we go ahead and remove the springs and get the exhaust out of here and we'll move on to step number two. All right, so now that we have the exhaust removed, we're going on to the next step, which is removal of the cover that goes to the chain case. This sled does not have a reverse. So it makes it a little bit easier as far as getting uh, your hands down there. Um, but essentially there are five bolts, they are three eighths. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove those. And before you do that, you're gonna wanna take a catch can and put it underneath the drain in the belly plant, belly pan. So when uh, all the fluid does come out, it, it, it will go into your catch can and not on the floor and make a mess. So why don't we go ahead and do that and we'll go on to the next step. All right, now that the cover has been removed and the, and the fluid is out of the case, what we want to do is we want to remove the gear set from the chain case. And essentially, this is a three-step process. You're going to remove the top gear, the bottom gear, and then we're going to loosen up the, uh, the, the, the chain adjuster. So the tools you're going to need, this is a 15 16 nut. That's a half-inch nut on the lower gear. And the jam nut holding the, uh, the tensioner on is a 9 16 so what we're gonna do is we're essentially we're gonna loosen up the uh, the jam nut on the adjuster. We're gonna back the adjuster all the way out. Then we're gonna take the the the, uh, the nut off the top gear, and then we'll um, take the bolt off the lower gear. But what you want to do before you do any of this, you're gonna be, essentially you're gonna set the parking brake, and that will lock the chain case from moving. So it'll make it a little. Uh, a lot easier getting all this stuff removed. So why don't we go ahead and do that and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so now that you have the gear set removed um, and exposing the uh, the drive shaft, take five minutes and, and uh, clean the chain case. Just take some car cleaner or some brake cleaner and uh, clean it up, get rid of any sludge or anything like that. So when you're getting ready to put it back together, everything will be nice and clean and, and then you can fill it up. So now we're going to go over to the, uh, the clutch side and we're going to work on the bearing retainer that holds the other end of the drive shaft into the, uh, the side of the tunnel. Alright, so now we're over on the, uh, the clutch side and this step isn't necessary but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to remove the secondary so I can get to the uh, grease point behind the secondary on the jack shaft. It'll also give us a little bit easier access to the bearing retainer. So to remove the secondary, all you have to do is just use the same half inch socket that you used on the uh, 
On the other side, just break that free. Again, set the parking brake and break that free and then the secondary will just slide off the uh, jack shaft. All right, so now with the secondary removed, now you can see the grease point on the bearing retainer for the jack shaft. And now we can also see the bearing retainer for the drive shaft. So what you wanna do is there's three nuts holding on that bearing retainer. Those are half inch. You wanna take those off and then you wanna take the speedo drive off. That's just held on by a thumb screw. And inside that speedo drive, there is a key. Um, so make sure when you take the speedo drive out, you don't lose the key, put that in a safe place and, uh, and uh, we'll put it back in when uh, during reassembly. All right, so now that the three nuts have been removed from the speedo housing, the drive shaft is essentially it's ready to come out. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, essentially work on the suspension and we're gonna do that now. All right, so what we wanna do now is remove the rear suspension. And the first thing we have to do is we have to loosen up the track. And what you want to do is we're, we're going to loosen up the bolts that hold the drive axle in. And we're just going to loosen that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the track adjusters on both sides. So once it's loose, we can hit the rear axle with an idler, I'm sorry, with a hammer, and essentially kick it forward and that will um, loosen up the track. All right, so what you wanna do at this point, if I didn't already mention it, what you wanna do is you wanna elevate the rear of the snowmobile using a ratchet strap, a ch uh, engine hoist, cherry picker or something. Um, just, you need to get the uh, back end up in the air, all right? So now that we've lo loosened the adjusters, the track is very loose, it's just hanging down. Um, now we're gonna go on to the next step, which is removing the four bolts that hold the rear suspension into the tunnel. These are half inch and um, on both sides, front and back. And um, the rear trailing arm mount um, has a little bit of a unique situation in how it, the, uh, how it screws into the uh, frame. Some people say, oh, you need to essentially grind down a, a small seven eighths wrench to get in there to stop the, uh, the retainer from spinning on the back side and that's not the case all you need to do is stick a screwdriver into the slot and uh to stop it from spinning but essentially why not get you guys down there and i'll give it a little bit better explanation of what we're gonna be looking at all right guys so this is gonna be a little bit difficult to see but essentially right in front of the bogey the hub and on the uh it's kind of the brass colored colored part Essentially, that's what we need to stop from spinning. Um, it's kind of hard to get the camera up there and to kind of show you what I'm going to do. Um, especially from this angle, there's really nothing we can do. So I'm actually going to come on the other side. But essentially, what you want to do is you're just going to stick a screwdriver into that slot. And once it starts to spin, it's going to lock up against the screwdriver. And using an impact gun, um, the bolt for the, uh, the rear mount, mount will come right out. So why don't we go ahead and, and uh, do that and we'll pop it out. All right, so now that the rear part of the suspension is dropped from the tunnel, now really comes the easy part of it. We're just gonna go after the front mounts. And again, the same thing, they are half inch bolts. And I highly recommend using a impact gun because um, to try to do it with a, with a ratchet and a socket um, more often what will happen is the shaft will just spin but if you use a rat uh, an impact gun that will essentially shake it enough where uh, you'll be able to back it out so why don't we go ahead and do that now all right so once you get the uh, the bolts out then it's just a matter of uh, wiggling the suspension out of the track what may what may make it easier if you're doing this by yourself I actually forgot to do it but um, you know, one step that will actually help you out is essentially the uh, taking the springs off the blocks, so all the uh, tension is released off the uh, off the rear control arm, so that will drop down. You know, it will make it a little bit easier to pull it out of the tunnel. It definitely makes it easier putting it back in the tunnel, so we'll do that 
when we're putting it back in. So at this point, you know, the track is just laying on the uh, on the trailer, and what we all have to do now is just get under in there and uh, slide the drive shaft. I believe it's to the left. It will pop out of the um, the chain case, and then it'll drop down. And then we just pull the drive shaft out. So why don't we go ahead and do that? All right, guys. So the old track has been removed along with the drive shaft. So we're put here's a track we're putting in. It's uh, just a standard Polaris track. This one's been studded, but it's in a lot better condition than the than the one that came out of it. Um, so with any track, it's you know, they're designed they're designed to rotate in a specific direction. So before you put the uh, the track in there, you gotta figure you gotta locate the uh, the rotation indicator on the track. And this one right here, where is it? There it is, right there. So essentially that's what you're going to be looking for to tell you which way the track is going to rotate. And so once you identify that, um, what you want to do is just put the track up in the bulkhead and then uh, put the drive shaft in there. So it helps if you have two hands, uh, well another set of hands to uh, put the track in there while you're trying to put the drive shaft in because you really need the drive shaft to be free of the lugs on the uh, the underside of the track to get it in there so it just makes it a lot easier you, you can't do it with one person but if you have a, a second set of hands to hold the track in while you're putting in there it makes a world of difference so why don't we go ahead and do that now and pop that in now there's a saying sometimes you get lucky this is definitely one of those instances of all the of all the times i've replaced tracks by myself i've always had uh, a hard time getting the drive shaft uh, installed um, with uh, you know fighting with the track and I kid you not this is the first time I, I was lying down under there and I got the drive shaft in on the first shot the first time I tried to put it in I just got lucky so <laughs> and I'm by myself and uh, I can tell you by from history I've never had this much <laughs> success so uh, just get lucky um, so anyway, at this point, what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reassemble the um, the bearing retainer and the secondary and everything else and you get, get that squared away. Because uh, the next step is I'm going to essentially um, pull the rear suspension out, uh, replace all the bearings on the uh, bogies, uh, take all the cross shafts out, clean all those up, do a visual inspection and everything else. So why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll just uh, do the reassembly of the chain case and everything else and then we'll close it out. Alright, just finished putting the uh, bearing retainer on the clutch side. And it's been about 5 minutes with some WD-40 and some rags and clean up all the belt dust and grease and everything else out. Um, just taking the extra effort to clean up and make it look good. So I went ahead and uh, greased the bearing while I was in there. And then uh, also grease the, the lower bearing as well. So, so one thing you want to check, and this bearing was actually fine on the drive shaft. Check the drive shaft bearing. Make sure it, it's rolling without any weird noises, vibrations, or resistance or anything like that. Because um, if you don't, you're just gonna be doing this again uh, very shortly. So especially with that amount of miles that this sled has, which is about 3,500, um, definitely want to check it. This is all just general maintenance that anybody can do. So what we'll do at this point, we're gonna put the secondary back on. I'm gonna clean up the uh, the jack shaft a little bit, get rid of that surface rust, clean up the keyway, and, and go from there and clean up the primary as well. So let's do, let's finish up this side and then we'll jump over on the, uh, on the chain case. All right, so the secondary is back on and uh, Spent some time cleaning the uh, the clutch faces on the primary and the secondary and essentially cleaning everything up. And uh, again, it take five minutes and, and, and go the extra effort and just uh, do all this stuff while you can instead of uh, troubleshooting a, a, a issue once the snow flies. You know, make sure you're all ready to go when the season comes. All right, so we're gonna go over to the, uh, the chain case and start reassembling the gear set. And uh, we're gonna do that now. All right, so we're back on the chain case side, putting this back together. So what you want to do is, you know, the tensioner should all be all the way out. 
and you're gonna essentially put in the gear set as one assembly um, the chain and the top gear and the lower gear will go on as one thing it's got to slide on together uh, there's no way you can put the one gear on and then slip the chain over it basically you put every, put the essentially you slide it in as one assembly right and then you know you tighten it up you put some loctite on that bottom bolt and then um, what you do is you put reinsert the, the cotter pin right so what you want to do as far as tensioning the chain and this is actually comes out of Polaris' service manual um, what you want to do first is rotate the clutch the secondary so essentially you're picking up all the slack out of the chain on the back side all right and then what you're gonna do is you're going to grab the adjuster with the jam nut loosened and essentially you fit you back you're going to finger tight it until you can't move it any further using your own fingers once you reach that point you then back it off one quarter turn and that's it, the tension is set. Um, that's all you need to do. All right, so at this point, the only thing you really need to do is once you do the uh, the chain case and put that back together, you're gonna fill it with fluid up to the point where it's gonna be visible at the dipstick. Um, mount the exhaust and uh, put all your springs back on, get that all set and then essentially you're good to go. The only thing I'm not gonna show you on this particular video is putting the rear suspension back in, just because that's gonna be a separate video as far as the rebuilding of that suspension. But essentially, if you made it this far with the track on the drive shaft and everything else, um, putting the rear suspension in is not that difficult. It's a little cumbersome to fight with it, but it's one of those things you just get it in the track lift it up and go from there um, if there is one suggestion uh, what I would recommend is you know you're gonna put in the front first and then you're gonna work on the rear and what you want to do that to make this easier is you want to collapse collapse the rear uh, the rear swing arm and the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna take all the tension off the springs what you're going to do is you're just going to lift it off the blocks and let the spring hang down and then the rear uh, swing arm will collapse and then you can move it up and down back and forth and everything else. Whereas if you just if you leave the springs on the blocks it's going to be rigid and it's going to be very difficult to get it on there. And um, But by collapsing the springs um, you'll be able to get it on there and then you just uh, lift the springs back up onto the uh, the blocks when you're done. But you know what? I may include that at a later point. I may make it a separate video. So, but essentially, that's all you need to do um, to change a track on an edge chassis. It's really not that complicated. A lot of it's just basic hand tools. Um, take your time. If, if it's the first time doing it, grab a buddy to help you out. So there's uh, two sets of brains to, uh, to double check everything as you're working on it. But um, if you guys found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, uh, please go ahead and, and subscribe. I'd love to have you uh, as part of my community. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.